Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to look all at how to create grid maps so that people can read our grid maps and that they can be understood. When we're making grid maps, there's three main things that we need to make sure we have done for our grid map to be successful. The first one is that our grid map needs even spacing. We need to label our x-axis and we also need to label our y-axis as well. So having a look here at this grid, you can see it's quite even spacing between each of the squares. The squares are about the same size and we've made sure that each space between every square is the same. And to make sure that it's completely finished off this grid, I've got to make sure I've labelled my x-axis, which if we can remember from the last lesson is the ones that will run along. So I could label it down here, A, B, C, D, E, F, and remember my labels could also go up the top here. So I've done even spacing, tick, label the x-axis, tick, and now I need to make sure I've labeled my y-axis. Remember it runs up and down on the sides. I could label them over here, A, B, C, D, E, F, or they could come over on this side as well. So there we go. This grid map is pretty good because it's got even spacing and labelled x-axis and a labelled y-axis too. Now here is a bit of a warning as what not to do. Like, have a look at this grid. This grid, no way does it have even spacing. We can see that some of these squares are a lot bigger than the other ones so they have not been evenly spaced at all that's what we do not want to do remember we want to have even spacing here's another warning as to what we do not want to do warning warning have a look when this person has labeled their grid map they've done a pretty good job of making it even spaces haven't they they've got even spaces all their squares are looking the same but here they've labelled their x-axis in funny places. This A is matching up with the line and this B is matching up with the line and this D is matching up with the line. But this letter here, their C, is a bit funny. See how the C falls within the space? It should also be matching up with this line over here. Same for our y-axis as well. The 1's matching up with the line but the 2's in the space and the 3's in the space but then the 4 is on the line. So this grid map is definitely not going to work because if when we are giving our coordinates if we're putting one on the line then all the other coordinates have to go in the line as well. And You can't have a grid map when coordinates are on the lines and in the spaces. It either has to be all on the lines or all in the spaces. Ah, oh, here we go. This is a good one. I'm going to give it a big tick. Now, the reason I know this is a good grid map is I can see that all of our squares are evenly spaced. They're all the same size. And when I look at my x-axis, which runs along, I can see they're all in the spaces. Very good. None on the lines. And if I check my y-axis as well, they're all in the spaces, so my Y and my X match up. They're not on the lines and in the spaces, they're all the same. This is a great grid map. Here you can see I've made a pretend grid map of my classroom. I've got my grid over here, and I know it's a good grid because they've all got even square spaces. I've labelled my X axis, you can see the numbers along A to L. And my y-axis as well is going 1 to 9. So I can give myself a tick. I've got even spacing, a labelled x-axis and a labelled y-axis. And over here, I've done up a key of different pictures and things that I've included in my grid map. I've got my student desk, the whiteboard, the reading corner, the teacher's desk, the bookshelf, the fish tank, the door, art supplies and the tent. And I've drawn a little key symbol for each of those things and then put it over here into my grid map. 
So if I wanted to find or if someone wanted to find where the tent was in our classroom, they can see the grid map has even spacing. They'd read the X axis first. There it is. It matches up with B. And then they'd come and look along the Y axis and the tent matches up with, oh, it's right there, 4. And you can draw a line to see they match up. So the coordinate for the tent would be B. Four. What about if I wanted to find where the fish tank was in this one? Same as always, x-axis I would read first. Along first, it matches up here with the L. And then I'd read my y-axis. Where does it match up with over here? Oh, there's the fish with the five. If I draw two lines to join them, let's use yellow, and there's the fish with my y-axis and there it is with the x. The coordinates for my fish would be L5. So remember, if we want to have a fantastic grid map, we have to have a couple of things. Even spacing between all of our squares. A labelled x-axis, yep, and a labelled y-axis, all either in the spaces or on the lines. I wonder if you could now go and create your very own grid map of your classroom and make it a good grid map by using l even spacing, labelling your x-axis and labelling your y-axis too. Good luck!